Michelle Marameter, but it's Michelle Marie Tony, and today we got a couple of news articles to briefly talk about, and some of them are pretty interesting. Um, the first one, um, I'm looking at Loom Music because on Google Plus, because it's easy for me to keep memorized. The first one is, ready for this? Um, listen to this one Mongolian Mummy. 1,500-year-old Adidas trainers have... Okay, what that's about. I'm going to read this to you just briefly. And you can find this on RT.com. This is actually from RT.com. And I just I thought this was really fascinating. I did put a link on this on my Google Plus and things like this. It says here, Mongolian mummies, 1,500-year-old Adidas trainers have internet hooked. And there's the pictures of the shoes. I don't know if you can see that very well. I will um, just remind you that I did put this link up on Google Plus and Facebook. It turns out that this woman has a 1,500-year-old female Mongolian has what appears to look very much like canvas adidas sneakers are really really interesting and we've seen similar things like this happen before so we know that this is uh, one of the things that some people are saying is could this prove that time travel is possible well well first of all let's be honest here it never said that time travel wasn't possible it just seems to be that we have grown up in a society um the um uh, our society has seemed to have this habit of saying that time travel is impossible. But is it really? Um, I don't know. Um, so could this been a fifteen a woman from the present time or in the not too distant future that somehow ended up going back fifteen hundred years? The Mongolian people are going to unwrap the mummy to find out more about this person. I really would love to see a surprise on that. Uh, for those of you Nessie fans, the Loch Ness Monster, um, they did not find the real Nessie, but they did find a film prop of Nessie that was submerged in Lake Ness. Uh, Loch Ness, as it's called in Scotland, Loch Ness. Uh, so that was found by Undersea. Um, not being, I guess it was a, 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 a prop that was used from movie set and it kind of just sank. So it's not the real Loch Ness Monster. They're still looking for that. Um, another thing is, big news is, what has happened in the state of Colorado regarding the Republican party giving all the delegates to Ted Cruz. It turns out that they had sent out a nasty smoking letter telling all delegates that they are to their vote will not be tolerated if they vote for Donald Trump. They wrote a big letter explaining why they don't feel that Donald Trump should even be considered for presidential candidate in the state of Colorado. That's why he didn't get the delegates. You could say is that they were kind of coerced into choosing to choose Ted Cruz. Not because, excuse me, Mr. Cat, you're scratching everything. The kids will get steal it, right? Um, yeah, Mr. Fame is going to steal the limelight again. Oh, that's right, you can't see his, his, because I'm, yeah, the only camera up to my here. But, uh, uh, what else? Um, oh, yes. For those of you who are on social, who are on social security disability programs, if you owe student loans. Obama gave you a sort of little surprise. He decreed that anybody on a permanent disability, that's the PD tag, uh, which is listed as a person whose condition is not likely to improve, um, which is about 387,000 Americans. That's all? <laughs> I think there's more than that. 387,000 people who apparently went to college. There we go. Um, shall have their debts forgiven. Mm. Some of the letters will be going out today or in a couple. Uh, this is like in the 11th. Uh, we'll be going out around the, the 12th and later. And we'll be 
there will be a 120 day follow up after that. Some of you people might receive the letters uh, no, within, your, within 16 weeks. What's the 128 day review for? I honestly. Um, now, it's kind of funny because I'm on income contingency repayment. Um, and what that means is when you read the rules on that, it says that if I consent, continue to stay at income contingency repayment or ICR for five years, after five years, my debt will be forgiven as obviously I have no way of making gainful source of income because of my permanent disability, which is my ISA, which is my eyes are doing okay. It's not, they're not bragging rights, but they are doing okay. Um, so why did Obama do this? Because he's a weasel, that's why. He's a sneaky little bastard and he knows exactly that's what it's going to take to get someone like Bernie Sanders, Sanders or Hillary Brown and Clinton into office. Why? Because everybody loves a free deal, right? I'm free to get on a debt free card. Everybody likes that. It was a political scapegoat, and it was also issued around 2012, a similar but not as expansive program. When she started, um, yeah, it did start about 2012, I think so. I think so. They started doing something with this, and it wasn't quite as expansive as now. Then last year, they came up with something which kind of expanded on what they did in 2012. It's a a little hook to get you to vote for a Democrat. That is a dishonest son of a bitch who basically has become his own dictator. A fascist worse than Mussolini. Okay? There you go. That's it. And we already know that Sanders is an honest to God full socialist. And once you become a socialist, then next level comes communist and then the United States will become like the former Soviet Union eventually to the point where everything is government controlled including the factories and everybody will be working for the federal government. Speaking of factories um, and employees, um, your wonderful friends at Verizon has went on strike. I think it was just over 30,000 union employees went on strike because uh, they want better rates, wages, and things like that. Um, that's great. But you know what? Oh, I don't think Verizon's going to give it to you. Sorry. Because, you know what? They'll just close down a home landline business and say, Yeah, we don't need you. We just close the business. Nah, 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 nah. Go sell gigs. Because it's the wired internet and phone service people that have gone on strike. It's not the wireless people, okay? So think about that for a minute. Since they have been trying to shed all of those wired connections, what a better way to do it. Okay, fine, you don't want a job, that's fine. There won't be no job to come back to. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be fun. When I pick up a phone and there's no oh, dial tone. Actually, I got Frontier, but that's not the point. Um, Frontier's been buying up a lot of the wired phone connections and has been, it provides my my high speed internet. It's not that great, but it's better than no internet, really. Um, speaking of the internet, next piece of news we have a new bulletin board it's up it's up it's running it's working um i gotta admit that some of the message bases are a little bit limited right now but you guys can certainly check it out i'm just gonna work on it some more um it's called you can get to it at http colon forward slash forward slash p-i-n-k-r-o-s-e dot d-h-i-s dot o-r-g forward slash PHPBB. Hit enter and you can go ahead and register and play with it. It's got some of the message bases that you can write in. I will add more as the need progresses. I don't think we're going to be seeing too many more new ones 
right immediate time future I had a lot of time trouble figuring out for several years I wanted to get a new bulletin board up um I'm sorry it's not exactly the same grade as the old 2012 forum or Howard forums for cell phones or um was it DIY audio or something like that which is another one but it's a start and it's a little more than it's free and it's gonna be better than way for you to get to talk to me and love me about stories news articles and things like that so if you'd rather have a place where it'll be easier for you to reply about topics or ask questions of topics there's the place to do it right now we have several forums including general chat which is basically for now I recommend using that for covering non-religious or sorcery issues. So again, you can get there by going to http colon forward slash forward slash p-i-n-k-r-o-s-c dot d-h-i-s dot o-r-g forward slash p-h-p-b-b and hit enter. Um, and it's, it's waiting for you. Of course, it is on DSL, so it may not be the fastest uploading to you, wherever you may be, because um, I only got one megabit per second up. So, I uh, understand it's not exactly um, fiber here. We don't have Fios in Winston, but, um, well, we never had Fios anyway. Um, even when we had AT&T, AT&T Uverse did not install fiber in Winston. Although, we know the medical center has fiber, but the, um, that's it. That's the only thing that has fiber. Now, uh, let's see, anything else? Um, what about the article about what's going on about the women's prisoners in the UK? Oh, okay, yeah, there's, um, that's another news article I shared on both um, Google Plus and Facebook that a woman's prison in England has a problem that they have no place to put released inmates. So the prison had been giving women tents and sleeping bags. Now it's funny because in the UK a lot of towns or against what they call rough sleeping. Well, we don't call rough sleeping here in the U.S., but the hell with it. If you know what it is, yeah. Basically, it's just sleeping in doorways, sidewalks, and where you're not supposed to be sleeping. Um, the sad truth is, is that the people in the U.K., um, these organizations are saying is that the prison should be doing more, to make sure women, after their time of incarceration is done, should have a place to go home to. A lot of them, unfortunately, cannot easily get back to where they originally are from because of the fact that it may be impossible to get there. Well, the same is true here in Connecticut as well as in the United States in general. Sometimes prisoners are released, they might get a little bit of money, and then basically they're told to hit the road. And when they do, well, guess what? They have no place to go, and they are miserable. Oh, yes. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Mm-hmm. So, what do you do? Um, to help a prisoner to get back on their feet after they have lost everything from being in jail for two or three, four or five years. They come out. They have no longer have a job. They no longer have um, any kind of a place to live. Their loved ones may have disowned them, which unfortunately does happen a lot of times. If they were married before their incarceration, they are now more than likely divorced and have no place to go. And um, it's, it's a real shame. Also, in the UK, they're talking about the um, the the austerity cuts being promoted by Cameron and how it's affecting those who work, the, what they call the Workers and Pensions Agency for those who get um, temporary, or the equivalent of temporary benefits. Unfortunately, finding out that sometimes the benefits are delayed extensively over very long periods 
up to t up to two weeks in some cases where they can't even make sure to pay for food or housing. Now, do you think this is a UK problem? I hate to say it, the United States is not far behind. In some cases, here in Connecticut, if you ever go through the Department of Social Services and you are in temporary assistance, you will find that sometimes the application time can take a little more than a few days. And in that case, you're gonna be dependent on other people to bail you out while you're waiting for your benefits. If you are in Social Security and Disability, your delays are a little shorter, but trust me, it's not that much of a difference. Um, it's, it turns out that when it comes to disabled or even those people want temporary assistance for families in need, you are basically in bad straight. Uh, even if you go to the British firm Oxfam, um, the... They point out that there is such a crushing demand for services. The same is true here in the United States. There is a huge backlog of people needing assistance and finding out that the system is not processing applications fast enough. Here in Connecticut, of course, uh, when they changed the system for the Department of Social Services by reclosing most of the regional offices and switching to a centralized bureaucracy, it did not help because now paperwork gets often lost in the system. For that reason, Governor, um, what's his face? <laughs> Malloy, he said uh, he wanted to open a few offices to help allow for people to walk in and submit papers, hopefully not to get lost in the process. Well, uh, yeah, okay, I've, I had friends get lost in the process and and find themselves totally ill-prepared for how they were supposed to submit the paperwork that they needed to provide. And I had one uh, potential friend basically scream at me and say it was my fault because I supposedly screwed up the paperwork. Well, I didn't screw up the paperwork. Uh, it turned out that the people at the Department of Social Services had screwed up the paperwork, not me. Um, that happens a lot more than you think. So it's not just a UK problem. And you might be wondering why I post a lot of UK news. Because UK news is a good example of what I'm seeing what's going on here in the United States. We keep thinking the United States is so much better than the rest of the world. Well, then you actually see, oh, it's supposed to be in your trenches. You see it. You see the real world. And you see what, what's going on. It's easier to look at another country's news. To understand your news, what you see around you here in your own home country. So, yeah, that's why I use a lot of UK news. And also, I'm kind of interested in the UK system because I'm thinking I might want to consider emigrating there one day. Uh, but I just don't really know if that's ever going to happen, but... Okay. Anyway, if you want me to read a little bit about the article, I will read it to you about the workers and pensions. I think it's really kind of um, fascinating... So let's go and take a look at the news article. And there you go. It says right here, Appalling welfare delays bring hunger and hardship to hundreds. Um, so, and they've they're actually been having some well, protests in the UK. Here's the full article title. Oh, appalling welfare and appalling welfare delays bring hunger and hardship to hundreds of thousands of Brits. And this is from Russian television um, news. Um, and I will just read you some of this. Delays in processing benefit claims causing severe hardships for hundreds of thousands of Britons. An inquiry by a veteran labor MP has found. In the last year, more than 154,000 people waited over 10 days for a job seeker's allowance. That would be something like temporary assistance. Um, a claim, or, which is called a JSA claim, to be processed according to the government figures released in response to Berker Head MP Frank Field's questions. Um, and it goes on, and it's got, it's got all this little stupid advertising why did I put this stupid advertising here in the first place? Um, let's see. 
story, I never understood the way this thing was organized. It doesn't really seem recent, it's just, okay, read more, okay. Okay, so, he says here, okay, of those around almost 44,000 people, well, more than in 16 days, it was revealed. For people with little to no money in the bank, just right even a day, let alone two weeks, well, an income is almost an impossibility. Almost an impossibility? Boy, that's kind of putting it nicely. That's that truth is, I have friends that have that situation. It is impossible. It really is. It's it's really difficult um, to do it without that. Said Field who also chairs the party parliamentary group on hunger. Quote, We therefore need further action to restrict the supply roads into hunger. Peel said, If claim applications were sped up, the number of people relying on food banks could be cut by a third. According to Trussell Trust, which runs more than 400 food banks across the country, Benefit delays are the most widely cited reason for people seeking charity. The um, delays to benefits across were behind behind twenty four twenty nine percent of all food bank referrals in two thousand four two thousand fifteen. Now, this is the UK. I hate to say it, but Connecticut has the same problem. As so many other states here in the United States. It's not just the UK. Don't think it's just the UK, because it's not. All right? Um, now, I want to. Here's a little bit about the article title I mentioned about um, the jails and the equipment of the women's in jail. The title of the article is called Better Off in Jail Women Given Tents and Sleeping Bags. Okay. Um, so let me read more of this. This is just another example of. Some of the inequities that we see every day. Better off in jail. Women given tents and sleeping bags instead of homes when released from prison. Okay. What about the men? I guess it's the same way, right? It just seems like they're focusing on the women here. Um, women released from British prisons are being issued tents and sleeping bags because of a shortage of combination. It has emerged. The report carried out last November... Indicated, 103 prisoners were discharged from HMP Bronzefield in Surrey in 2015 with nowhere to go. The figures appear to be echoed further analysis that female prisoners are in an increasingly precarious position when they are rela- when they are released. I'm gonna click on this. Okay. Oh, God, this thing's got a lot of advertising. Yes, it does. Okay. Um, the number of women leaving jail with a secure place to go fell to around 88% in 2015 from 95% in the previous year. The report found that Bronzefield performed well overall that said, the quote, the prison had issued tents to two women that were re- who were released without anywhere to go to, and the chaplaincy often gave out sleeping bags. Prison director Charlotte Patterson, right out, what a name, right out, <laughs> R-I-D-E-O-U-T, said the private jail workers with local authorities to house those released um, since the private jail works with local authorities and houses are released, but the shortfall affects the whole of the prison estate. In a statement to the Revelation Libraries, Shadow Prisons Minister Joe Stevens lauded the program progress which has been made, but said it's absolutely staggering that women were seen to have been released in prison with nothing more than a tent or sleeping bag. Um, it's astonishing and a far cry from the safe and secure accommodations needed to assist them 
in the rehabilitation process, she added. A 2013 report by the Howard League for per Penal Reform warned that homelessness is a key driver in the re offending among the former prisoners. They also found that the uneven spread of housing means, quote, in order to be accommodated, women were removed from their original home communities. Yeah, you know, um, here in Connecticut, we have a lot of women that unfortunately go to Niantic, and, which is our state prison for women, and a lot of times they don't have a way to get back to their home areas. It's, it puts a lot of stress on them, too, because you think that... Do you think the prison is going to give you a bus ticket back to your hometown? Probably more than likely, no. Um, because they figure, in Connecticut anyways, you broke the law, now you fucking sleep with it. Um, I think it's kind of sad because it's it's just... It's silly. It's stupid, and it's actually adding to the homeless population, as it says in this article from the, from the UK. So... Yes, it's a serious problem. Um, it's um, and it's not just in the UK. Now, uh, it, I mean, this is the reason why I, I think we have to stand up for what we know is right. But we also have to remember that when you come out of jail, you're not exactly in any unless you're someone like um, you know Paris Hilton or. Some famous star who's got money behind you and a and a benefit funds you can access to, you know, find housing and a lodging and a place to sleep and a way to get there. And most people, most prisoners, go into jail. They have lost everything, especially if they've been arrested for drug deals or whatever. And then they find out that number one, they have no place to go back to because the landlords won't let them back. Hello, you know what that means, right? Yes. Um, in fact. The, the Housing and Urban Development Office here in the United States wants to kind of relay or relax some of those hardcore done drugs, can't return policy a little bit because it has created a problem. You know what? I'm going to say something right now. You know what's created the problem? Is this. You guys and the war on drugs, Richard Nixon, uh, as much as I hate to say it in this area, you really, really made a mistake. But wait a second, is it really Richard Nixon's fault? You know what? It actually goes back further than that. Okay, started out with the marijuana illegalization in the 30s, and it got on further on with the use of illegalization, mind altering substances. I think that this war on drug bullshit that started out as an American idea. That went into a global idea is part of the problem. I'm not saying it's all the problem, but I'd say, yeah, um, if you get stuck doing drugs. Now, when I was on Section 8, I could never use recreational marijuana in this bar, but even if it was legal in Connecticut to do it. Now, I could use benefit from it from my eyes. I have been in marijuana smoke, thank you very much. Because people in my building use it for both medicinal and recreational. Now, in Connecticut, it's decriminalized, but it's not legal. I can't go to Cumberland Farms and pick up a pack of joints yet. And they may be changing soon because a lot of states are starting to rethink that about special marijuana. Um, the... Because I, this apartment for a while was on Section 8, if I was going to stay in the Section 8 program, if I was ever caught with any controlled substance in my apartment, any Schedule 1 controlled substance, even if the state level says if I had a prescription for it, I could still lose my Section 8 voucher. Now, I lost my Section 8 voucher because of another reason. It had nothing to do with that. But, I'm also bring it up. Um, so, if... Connecticut ever legalized marijuana, I would have to voluntarily give up the form anyway because, number one, I know it does help my eyes, and I've been in marijuana smoking it, and I know what it does, and my eyes feel better, and they, they do better. And uh, by the way, my eyes are doing okay today. Yeah, they are, sort of. 
yeah. Like, you always, like, you always test it and see, like, the wheels in the wall. Like, they're starting to get a little more detail. Yes, they are. Okay. Um, now, all this stuff, what we have done, the United States especially, has got the, this is really scary. We have more people behind bars that have criminal records than most other Western countries. Uh, I don't know why that is. That we have decided that the only solution to deter people from using illicit products or doing white or blue collar crime is to lock them up. In the case of white and blue collar crimes, like embezzlement, which is a white collar crime, and um, inside trading and insider trading and all that stuff, I don't think it's helping. But the biggest problem in the United States is the issue of the war on drugs. The war on drugs predominantly hurts the disenfranchised who do not have the money for proper legal counsel and then get screwed up because the prosecutions want to see them locked up. One of the things was the concept of maximum prison terms or as a mandated minimum sentence was often 5, 10, 15 years. You know, for what? For nonviolent drug use? If I'm using, if I'm, I'm not into this, but the heck with all these If I'm going to use LSD, or if I'm going to use hash-ish, or if I'm going to use magic mushroom, BCB, whatever, you're going to lock me up because I bought some from a pusher? It is... That's the solution because obviously if a person's using things like that, they may, you need to look at them as it is. It's a problem that they're using it for self-medication for some reason. Oh yeah, some say because it feels good, makes them feel good. And we found out, and so this thing, new research has been done on this just recently. I read this yesterday. I didn't get a chance to print this article. You want to talk about happy tripping? They're actually doing research now on LSD again um, after 50 years. And one of the things they found out is LSD really does have positive therapeutic use. Who would have thought? I mean, the same thing with ecstasy. Same thing with all these other drugs that were one time legalized drugs that we turned into bad juju. Then it turned out that some of these things really do have positive value. It's just that sometimes people abuse them. How oh, why do people abuse them? Because they makes them feel better. Okay, sure, it's a big pharma wouldn't like that. Oh, I'd rather have you take our expensive $750 a pill solution and to go ahead and take a, I'll uh, go buy a 50 bag, you know, $50 for a, uh, for a one ounce bag of pot. But you know what? The truth is, is that the pot's less money than your prescription product, and it works just as good, then I really spend the 50 bucks, but I shouldn't have to worry about going to jail for it because it works for me. Lord God made medications for people. Hopefully not to abuse them, but they will. Yeah, we knew that. Mother Austin knew that. Jesus knew that. I don't know. Did, you, did they have an, uh, a substance abuse problem in it and do so many times? Yes, I bet they did. They definitely probably had issues with alcoholism. It was certainly is not a new addiction. People, alcoholism is an existing problem throughout the ages of time, and it's not going to change. So, if anything, to lock the users up. And shame them and then go ahead and make them look like they can, should never work a day in their life again it makes no sense at all. Now, if you want to get these people the treatment they need, you got to stop turning them into criminals just because they smoke the doobie. Okay? That's the truth. That's why the decriminalization of marijuana in Connecticut was a great thing. Number two, it's now it says decriminalizing is not totally legal across the board for having your wine in your bucket. You can't go not you cannot go to Cumberland Farms and pick up an ounce of joints. I mean, someday you will. Because it's 
been discussed in Vermont, and it was decided in Vermont that by the legislation, nonetheless, not by referendum, that let the state legalize marijuana as a way to deal with the outrageous cost of incarceration and prosecuting prisoners. And oh yeah, and the state of Vermont makes tax income. Oh, a state likes that, you know, they don't, I'm going to have to depend on money from the federal government for everything, let's be honest. Also, the United States Tax Internal Revenue Service has made a bumper crop, crop of dollars this, this quarter. Gee, that's nice. You're going to distribute that wealth? You're going to give it to put it towards the programs that need it? I don't know. You know what? The United States is crooked. Just as, Congress is just as crooked. Is what happened in Colorado with the Republican nomination. Don't trust them because they are depending on the welfare of lobbyists. Okay? Very, very sad. Uh, all these things that are happening and yet no one's really talking about it. And yeah, here I come. I'll go out there on the microphone and uh, yeah, I did have a vlog in for today, but unfortunately I decided not to redo it because I'm going to decide to redo it here and combine it with this uh, video because I, want, and I saw some more news articles I felt was worthwhile bringing up. Uh, in the near future, more and more states are looking, as I said, into legalization of marijuana. Is the ATF going to back down? Well, Obama wants them to. Okay. Which would be great. If a state, say for example, Connecticut chooses to legalize marijuana, as does, say, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and maybe even a state in New York, well, New York could use the money. New York is, right now, needs money. All, all these states do. They're all, they're all having financial hardships. So... That's an issue. Also, we also found out that the Federal Reserve Chairman, Janet Yellen, as in a couple days ago, was in conference um, behind closed doors with Oprah Obama, the abomination, to try to let him know that the economy's in a shitter and it's going, and, and that someone just flushed the toilet. And it's not going to get him any better. Of course it's not going to get better, because you know why? Because the problem is that the whole world, duh, it's not just us, China. China's a big problem, China's where we get all our shit from. Germany, France, Spain, Greece. Well, it seems to be doing a little bit better as Russia, and then, then they're still having problems too. Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Saudi Arabia is in deep shit because they cannot seem to get the price of oil to go up so they can basically afford to provide for their needs for their state, for the monarchy. Hello! You people in Saudi Arabia don't realize that what you guys created your own problem because you're putting all your money into one fucking source of income oil. Do you think it was going to last forever? No. You know, the thing is, is that everything is, is, is falling apart. Everything. And if we don't change something soon, we all are going to be like Pac-Man. <laughs> um, game over. Actually, I love the sound of the game I had on the camera, or my technical computer. It sounded like a balloon deflating. <laughs> it's still the same idea. You think about it. The whole economy of the world is going... <laughs> Why? Because everything is so interconnected. I keep mentioning it to you. Mutual assured economic destruction. Mead. Okay? Mead. Mutual Assured Economic Destruction. I know. So you might say, well, great. So 
China goes down the shitter. We go down the shitter because we can't afford to buy their stuff because their stuff's going up because they're going through hyperinflation. We can't afford to buy products from Japan because they're having the same problem. We can't get a free credit from anybody because they're, they're afraid to lend money and blah, 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 blah. Right? Oh, yeah. And don't forget, because of the crazy weather, I did not mention this. But because of the crazy weather this, uh, this April, a lot of our crops, a lot of our food crops have been damaged because of the late cold and snows that have affected the United States. Peaches, apples, oranges, grains, uh, you name it, it's been affected in a way that they're not going to be likely to be a good crop this year. If you're lucky and you didn't plant yet, you might be lucky enough that you can salvage what you haven't planted because you didn't have to worry about it. But the weather is a mess right now, and that's, don't blame me for this, okay? Let me explain one thing. I don't necessarily always dig my, put my paws in the, the forecast. I usually, sometimes I like to let the system write it out. But I will intervene if I really feel it has to be intervening. The good news is the temperatures are modulating in the next few days. We will be seeing warmer weather. But this is the beginning of the new climate change. The new global cooling. Ooh, yeah. Global cooling. Not global warming. Don't tell me about global warming. That's a, that's a fantasy, baby. That's a fantasy. It's been 14 years. Since 2002, that we've really had global warming. And NASA's still trying to fuck up the numbers and say, we had the warmest February record. <laughs> nope, we did not. Not here in New England, anyway. But I can say we didn't have the most snow. I can certainly say that. We didn't have much snow at all this year. But that doesn't mean that we, you know, that doesn't mean we always get a bumper crop of snowflakes. We had a lot of late snow in April that screwed us up and screwed up the, a lot of the agriculture. The good news is this year is that a lot of the towns sent and sell budgets were well prepared, but they didn't have to use it, which means that that means for next year they don't have to worry about having running into a deficit because they didn't use all the sand and the salt this year, so they can use it for next year. Nothing wrong with that. That's that's fine. Um, but the thing is, is that I also want to talk to you about something else. Some people have been calling my studio line. Uh, today, one woman answered who was trying to do a crank call. She said, goodbye. Because I said, hello, I wait to see if she said anything else. And she just said goodbye. So someone has been calling my studio line and has not been leaving a message or trying to talk to me. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? What's the point? That's so stupid. It's it's it, bore, it, it, it just goes on idiocy right there. Mm. All right, guys. Look, it's running late. I I hope you got give you enough stuff to chew on. Got a lot of comments here. We've got a lot of topics covered, and hopefully you guys will be willing to leave a comment in the comment section below or. Try out the new bulletin board, too, while you're at it. It's, again, it's http colon forward slash forward slash p-i-n-k-r-o-s-c dot d-h-i-s dot o-r-g forward slash p-h-p-b-b. That's the name of it, p-h-p-b-b. And um, we'll talk about all this stuff. And it's free, and it's, I don't, I know. Pushing any hard and fast rules on it um, for the time being. As long as you guys don't uh, try to push my luck with me, I will uh, leave it pretty much open uh, as open policy. I'm not going to force rules on everybody because that's kind of stupid. But you know, sometimes we need rules. Most and common rules is don't act like a dickhead. There, that's all I ask for. Okay? You want to ask questions? That's fine. Um... And the same thing in the, in the religious areas. I got. Uh, I don't have a lot of religions in there because, first of all, there's a reason I left Christianity out. That's this. 
Christianity has got so many forums and nothing starts war more than Christianity. Um, that's because especially Protestant Christians love to start trouble. Um, I have not seen too many Catholics doing this um, as much as the Protestants do. And you guys know who you are, so I don't have to rehash it. As it uh, and so we support the pagans, we support the sorcery people, but we don't really cover Christianity yet. Um, because first of all, so mainstream, you guys can go to any forum you want, on any, on any PHP, BBS system, and most every one of them will have a spirituality or with Christianity can be uh, talking about Christianity stuff. So if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, my system is designed more of focusing more of things that I'm interested in following, not necessarily following every single possible religious gamut in the, for example, on the Christian Parthenon or the Abrahamic faith Parthenon or the Muslim faith, which is also been the Abrahamic faith or the, every single neo-pagan group and subgroup i can't it's just too many i only have like an 80 gig 80 gigabyte hard drive for the whole thing so i've got to make it um practical to cover all these areas so there you go all right so for now i'm gonna let you go okay don't forget stay safe stay warm stay dry and stay out of trouble and we will see each other soon okay bye bye